everyone. Good afternoon. Welcome to today's webinar on building a social media strategy. I'm really excited to be your host today and your speaker as well. My name is Jenny and I have Steve here as well. We're going to be talking together on this webinar to talk through tips for building a successful home social media strategy. So in case you're not as familiar with Surefire and who we are, we're located in Northern Virginia and our all-in-one marketing platform helps home contractor businesses drive visibility through all channels on the web so they can continue to grow their business with ease. Our mission here is to educate businesses on a variety of topics to help you succeed and to help the industry grow. We want to know who you are as well, so let us know where you're joining us from today. And you can do that by using the chat box on the right-hand side of your screen. So a few quick reminders before we dive into the discussion and get started. You will get the recording of this chat tomorrow, and you can ask us any questions, make comments, et cetera, by using that chat box, which is on the right-hand side of your screen. Because you're on the webinar with us right now, you will have the chance to win a Google Home Hub that we'll be giving away at the end of today's talk. So stay tuned, because that's when we'll be announcing the winner. So today, we're really lucky to have Steve speaking on this webinar. Hey, um, everyone. And myself. I am a marketing manager here at Surefire, and I will let Steve introduce himself. Hey everyone, Steve here. I'm also a marketing manager. I've been with Surefire for a number of years now, and one of the things that always comes up with conversations we have with our clients and just contractors and local businesses in general is the idea of social media, because it can definitely be fun and entertainment and also overwhelming and kind of a endless tunnel if you don't know what you're doing on social media. Mm -hmm. So hopefully we'll share some ideas and tips that you can implement that you haven't already been using, so. Steve's done a really good job with our own social media and with some of our clients' social media, so he really knows what he's talking about. I'm more on the advertising side, so paid social is my expertise, but I also have a background in organic social media as well. We're going to be diving into both today. So with that, let's get started. Um, just why social media? Lately, a lot of online engagement happens off your website. This latest stat here is 73% of engagements your customers and prospects have with you are not incurring on your website, which is a complete 180 from what it used to be even just a few years ago. So where are they engaging with you? It's on your social media. It's on the Google My Business search results page where they can see your Facebook page, they can see your Instagram, your next door, Pows, YouTube, Google My Business, Twitter, all of this. So these are the platforms we're gonna to talk to you about today. And we're not gonna to go too much into the details on like a specific platform in general, but more so building a plan around incorporating all of these in your social media plan. So there's definitely, all, I'm sure all of these are familiar with you. Um, Facebook's biggest one, Instagram to Nextdoor house or more home and services industry niche communities, which provide a great opportunity. And I don't have to go into any detail on Google, Google My Business just because it's such a big part of your online presence. Google My Business is your website that's not your website. <laughs> Shows like, up right in the search engine results. Sort of like your home page on Google, if you think about it that way. So we're going to cover some trends and stats over the next few minutes here to kind of just set the framework of what we're going to be recommending and helping you implement in the second part of this presentation. So a lot of people don't necessarily think of Facebook as a search engine. But with the, mo the new updates and features they are coming out with and have announced to come out with later this year, it is really a search engine if you think about it. It's not just connecting with friends and family and liking their photos anymore. I definitely use Facebook to search for any friends' recommendations or just to search for businesses. I actually check out a lot of businesses' Facebook pages before I have any interactions with them. Mm -hmm. So if you're thinking of how to start, Facebook's definitely the place to be. Um, social media in general, a lot of people spend two hours, 22 minutes per day on it. So there's, there's definitely engagement there. And then it's not 
just young people, which is the common mis misconception that you use social media. It's a wide range. Um, even my grandparents are on social media, Facebook in particular. And this baby, baby boomers, the 48% is actually the growing demographic that's on social media, um, especially on Facebook. I would say that leans more towards the baby boomers and the older half of millennials rather than the Gen X. Mm -hmm. And I'd be curious to know what you would say here, but 73% of marketers and businesses believe social media marketing has been somewhat effective or very effective for their business. So yeah, let us know. How would you rank your social media efforts as of today? Um, let us know in the chat box. I will take a look at those. And we kind of touched on this. It's, it's not just connecting with friends and family anymore. Half of people use social media to research products and services and just kind of get a sense of contractors and businesses in their area that they could potentially connect with for their home project. And 71% who've had a positive experience with you are more likely to recommend you on social media. This is sort of what I was talking about. So they have, Facebook went from reviews to just yes or no recommendations recently in just the past six months, I believe. Um, but other than that, a popular thing on Facebook that I see with people my age, 26 and a little older, um, we all ask each other for recommendations in posts. So rather than going to the business and actually recommending them on their page, which we do as well, but we specifically ask our friends and family on Facebook for recommendations. And this is where really where um, Nextdoor has thrived too, because just a, we had a webinar with them um, just a month ago, and I think almost a third of activity on Nextdoor are people asking for recommendations and actually are recommending um, businesses they've worked with in their neighborhood. And Nextdoor, in case you're not familiar with it, they verify exactly where you live. So it's the only social network out there that confirms you indeed live in this area. So you know that you're engaging with people that will actually buy services from you and work with you. So this is a really good opportunity for you to create the best customer experience as possible. Um, not only so they'll leave you a review online, but so they will verbally and word of mouth recommend you to their friends and family. But there's a catch because this next app, 42% of Facebook in particular, but just overall, expect a response from you within 60 minutes. If they're asking a question, either tweeting at you or messaging you on Facebook, and we're going to share some tips later on that can help you kind of provide that quick response through automations and just little things you can set up on, on your profiles. And here's one that is, I think, really profound. 85% of video watched on Facebook is without sound. I know everybody <laughs> may joke about it, but we all watch video when we are in the bathroom. Definitely. Um, 100 million hours of video is watched on Facebook each day. And the rise of Instagram stories and Facebook stories in general, um, just video is by far the best in type of engagement to post on social media. And it's actually a lot simpler to create a video, an engaging video, than you may think it is. We're going to get into some tips a little later on in the presentation on creating videos. And it's definitely mobile driven. So 91% access social media from their phones and 80% of total time on social media is spent on um, their mobile devices. So in terms of thinking of how you're posting the types or the size of images you're sharing, kind of how you display text on images if you're posting an offer, all of this kind of has to be thought about from someone viewing it on their iPhone or Galaxy phone, more so than a big screen laptop. And here's kind of a snapshot of what we were talking about in the beginning of when somebody Googles your business name to look to learn about you, 73% of this engagement happens off your website. So kind of there's Google ads obviously at the top 
local service ads if you're in one of the uh, eligible uh, professions that they're available for. There's BBB, Yelp, Facebook, Angie's List, Hal's, just all the social media profiles will appear for your business name if you've claimed them, if you have your information accurate in the same. So that leads us into some tips on building an effective and incorporated strategy on all these different platforms. And again, these are the eight platforms that we're talking about today. Um, Facebook is the best for the best social platform for video content. Obviously, YouTube is where videos are housed. But for businesses, I would say YouTube doesn't get as much engagement on their videos um, as much as Facebook does. So Facebook and Instagram are definitely photo and video dominant, and you're going to get the most engagement on Facebook. Nextdoor and House, like Steve said, they are more focused on the home improvement industry. Nextdoor, more home services focused than House, which is more home improvement focused. Nextdoor is all about recommending businesses and things and services to your immediate neighbors. It's important to have a profile on there if you don't already. I have personally used Nextdoor to hire an HVAC guy. I've used it to hire um, a roofing and gutters company to clean my gutters. And House is a really great channel if you're remodeling or roofing any of those sort of companies to showcase before and after pictures and really provide inspiration to homeowners that are looking for those services. And LinkedIn, especially for recruiting and posting jobs. Um, we know that, especially this time of year, finding the, the labor and the workforce to handle all the projects can be a challenge. So that's something to definitely consider. And something to mention on Google My Business about how it is more of a social media channel now. Um, if you haven't heard of Google Posts or if you haven't used Google Posts, um, it is basically a social post or an event post or an offer post that you can publish directly in the search results page. It'll show on your Google My Business listing and it'll actually show sometimes in your maps listing as well. So that's on the right hand side of the search screen and in the main search results. So that's definitely something to utilize. And Google's obviously taken away Google Plus, but what they've done is they're trying to build a more social ecosystem across all their platforms. So Google Search, Google My Business, Google Maps, and kind of make Google a platform itself a major social network. Before we get on to the next slide, we actually have a question from Steve I just saw come in. Different Steve than the one that's talking with me. <laughs> um, he asked, is it better to have a video without sound? Um, no, not necessarily. I would say it's better to add captions to your video because some people are going to listen to it with sound. Um, so as long as you have captions there that follow along with the sound or let people know what, what the general summary of what you're talking about in the video, that's really good for everyone watching without sound, I would say. I and mean, then even adding a, uh, depending on the video, of course, but like a little music, musical melody as kind of the background to mm -hmm. whether you're scrolling through um, a photo slide share or so. <clears throat> yeah. When people are listening with sound, they definitely appreciate that. Yeah, definitely. So there are a lot of goals to consider when you start thinking about how you want to focus your social media strategy and where you want to focus things. Um, these are the seven, eight top goals that we've heard from clients and from businesses. Um, so we're just going to talk a little bit about each one and what sort of platforms are the best for each goal. So for brand awareness, I would say Google, Definitely Facebook, definitely. And I would say Nextdoor goes for all of these. So just assume I'm saying you need a Nextdoor presence for every single one of these goals. Um, community engagement, I'm gonna say Facebook is gonna be your top choice there. Instagram, secondary, but also important. Um, videos, live videos on Instagram and Facebook stories are the best 
engagement drivers, um, before and after photos, polls, all of these things are stuff we're gonna get into a little bit more detail in. And then website traffic and even the sales and leads, um, dominantly Facebook. And Google My Business. <clears throat> and Google My Business for Google sure. My business, definitely. The ability to run Facebook ads or a Google post uh, with a special offer or a link back to your website to learn more. Um, one thing I don't think a lot of people know is you can't actually post a link on Instagram. A, a lot of people try to do that, but it, Instagram doesn't allow that as a feature. It just appears as text and you can't click it. So that's something to take into account when you are sharing posts on Instagram? Um, distribute content. This sort of goal goes in with one and two. If you're trying to distribute content, you're generally trying to gain brand awareness and community engagement. And that's really everywhere. If you're distributing content on one platform, if you're putting a video on Facebook and Instagram, put it on YouTube as well. If it's a video you wanna showcase on your website, if you put it in YouTube, you can just embed that YouTube link onto your website. Um, you can post it as a Google post. You can put it on your Google My Business listing. And I don't believe you can post videos on Nextdoor, but on Hows you can. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> you can link to videos on Nextdoor. So if there's a thread of neighbors talking about your particular service and someone mentions your business and you jump in the conversation on this thread and you have a video that showcases like something very similar to what they're talking about, you could definitely link to that video over on YouTube and it'll be a great tool in getting that person interested in your business. Brand advocacy, I would say Facebook and Google My Business, those are the, and Nextdoor, <laughs> Facebook and Google My Business are the two top platforms for reviews in the home services industry out there. That's where homeowners look to find reviews on home services companies. Next door, very brand advocacy focused. It's all about recommendations. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> and supporting customers, you need to think Facebook, Messenger, Twitter, it takes all of three seconds to tweet at a company if they want to complain or if they want to thank you for a project well done. <clears throat> and then we'd also be curious is maybe you're trying to do something else on social media. So. If, if you have kind of another focus, there's even perhaps like recruitment, like we mentioned with LinkedIn. Um, so we'd be curious to hear how you're using social media right now, perhaps maybe what you hope to get out of social media after this training or moving forward. So you can go ahead and post that in the comments as well. So these next, this next section, we're gonna focus on helping you build a strategy that focuses on your customers, online reviews, photos, videos, uh, what distinguishing your company, your employees, and then of course lead generation is a big one. So focusing on your customers, the uh, best marketing is not done by a company, it's by your customers. I think that's kind of just a uh, common fact that everybody knows. Mm -hmm. um, social proof is very, um, persuasive and just more you can encourage your clients to post their own photos and videos and talk about their experience with you on social media and make sure that they tag your business profile on whichever site they are posting on. It's going to be big. Yeah, I would say that homeowners and people in general are a lot more likely to do this now than maybe they were in past years. Um, a lot of businesses have asked to sh if I could showcase um, whatever I purchased on my Facebook page, on Instagram. A lot of companies will even do contests. Um, they'll ask us to post pictures, post, oh, hey, post your before and after photo and you'll be entered to win this sweepstakes giveaway. And that really encourages people to be talk, start talking about your business and the results that they have seen using your company. We ran, um, this is a number of years back, but a contest on Facebook with a client of ours to post pictures of their gardens. So this was a gutter company. Um, just kind of, it also just doesn't have to be specific 
to the project that was done, but kind of build that brand awareness on the overall lifestyle that potential new customer can have after they've worked with you. So reviews, reviews are the currency of your online presence today. So no marketing strategy, let alone social media would be complete if you don't focus on increasing the number of reviews you have on sites like Google, Facebook, House, Nextdoor, throw in Yelp as well. And a good tip here, um, if you wanna ask a happy customer for a review, you want to do it while you're there with the customer and provide them the easiest link to go to. You can use text message, texting them the link is probably the easiest way. Just link them to your Facebook page or to your Google My Business page. And it making it as easy as possible is more likely to actually get that review from the customer. And believe it or not, there was a study done just last week um, that declared Yelp is by far the most common third-party listing that shows in Google search results. So when you think about it, um, so I know a lot of people go back and forth on how valuable Yelp is today because there's just so many review sites out there to think about. Obviously, it's number one for restaurants. I would say Yelp and OpenTable are number one for mm -hmm. restaurants, but we're not in the restaurant industry. We are in the home services and home improvement industry. It's important to have a Yelp listing and to have a profile on Yelp. Maybe get a handful of, of reviews on there and definitely stay focused on it in case someone does leave you a review on there. You wanna be responding quickly and letting anyone that goes to your Yelp page know that you're there, you're listening to whatever, either concerns or happy reviews that people wanna leave you on there but I wouldn't say it's something to focus a whole lot of effort on getting reviews on Yelp. And then once you get the reviews, it's okay to share them everywhere. So whether it's like this example here from a Windows company posting it on Facebook as a nice design custom image. Um, I, I see all the time on Instagram where you can reshare someone's Instagram story that they tagged you in to your own story. I see a lot of businesses are doing that just to thank their customers for adding them to their Instagram story. Mm -hmm. So next we're gonna focus on photos. And like the slide says, a photo is worth a thousand words. Um, photos are everywhere. Images are the best way to really showcase your company and your services. So you wanna take really high quality photos. This is the first thing people are seeing when they're looking for your business. They're seeing what photos you choose to put online. So you wanna make sure they're the highest quality possible. And you wanna make sure that these photos are published everywhere, your website, Google My Business, and all of your social media profiles, just so there's consistency across the platforms. And a, a big part of Google search is actual image search. So in, in every image you are uploading to Google My Business and posting online, it is another chance that someone can discover your photo and learn about your business. And it's just home imp home projects in general are highly visual. So the more someone can get a sense of your style, your quality of work, your expertise, and visualize what they're seeing in their heads, actual in reality, can make them that much more excited to get going and contact you for their uh, renovation or any kind of home project. Definitely. <clears throat> um, so the next thing to focus on is videos. And if you have seen anything from our company on Facebook um, or any of our videos on YouTube, you've probably seen me in all the videos. <laughs> I do a lot of our video recording, a lot of our editing, and obviously I am the star of a lot <laughs> of our videos. <laughs> We host uh, these kind of webinars <laughs> every week, so there's always a new video to record. Definitely. Um, so there are a lot of different types of videos that you can record as a home services business. A lot of videos that will be useful to potential customers and to existing customers. So a couple types of videos that I would recommend recording are maybe some educational how-tos just on some little work, some sort of touch-ups here and there that customers can maybe do themselves. Um, this really shows your willingness to be helpful to your customers. 
Um, another good type of video to do is just sort of an intro to the team, uh, sort of company culture video. People like to hear your story. They like to see who they're going to be working with and just hearing a little bit about the company and your values always goes a long way. And this is a good video to showcase on your Google My Business listing and to showcase on your website. Um, another type of video I would say is good to record are any sort of before and after videos, as long as you get your customer's consent. Another last type of video I will mention, um, once you actually get a new customer, it can be a good idea to record a video of like, hey, here's what to expect. Maybe this is after you book that free consultation or something like that. You can send a video to say, here's what to expect when we come to your house to do this free consultation. It really helps the customer feel secure and like they made the right choice. And then that kind of, it's a nice transition to our next is just to focus on your company. So brand awareness, while all home services are the same, a roof replacement is a roof replacement, but not all home services companies are the same. There's so many different nuances and characteristics that make your company unique. So like Jenny had just mentioned, recording a video about who you are, who are your team members and who potential client is gonna be working with can go a long way in building that, that close relationship with your client. And it's kind of what sets you apart from other businesses like yours in your local area. And then, uh Little helpful tip here, when you are recording videos, you always want to make sure you're relatable and energetic. Try not to be reading off of a script, just talk from what comes to your mind and the video will almost always be received better and get better engagement than if you're sitting there talking to the screen with off of a script. So just try to be human and as helpful as possible. And to lead into our next slide, actually, um, maybe you're not the best in front of the camera, but one of your employees or someone else in your company probably is. So you want to really get your employees involved, maybe get one of them or a couple of them on the camera and they can sort of be your office marketing hero and be the star of your company's videos. So whether you're kind of doing some in community um, work or some charity organization that you're involved with, um, just getting your company and your 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 name out there as a relatable, honest human company to work with is key. And everybody worries about have, recording that perfect one minute video with no mistakes. But if you're out in the on the job site, or just walking around a house, walk, talking through things, it's okay to stumble over a word here and there too. Mistakes just, are human. Yeah, it just makes you more relatable. And then they're like, Oh, this is like an actual video. It's not like, it's, it's not, I don't know what I'm trying to <laughs> Some highly produced videos can be a little bit less trustworthy than maybe something a little bit more yeah. authentic. <clears throat> and then lead generation. So thinking about sharing maybe a monthly special offer that you're, you're running. This is a really good thing to do on Google My Business, utilizing the Google Posts. You can set an offer as an event, and events can run for, I think, up to a month on Google My Business, and that post will show up for as long as that event is running. Or you can just do a regular offer post on Google My Business, which is slightly different than events. Um, posts, when they're not an event post, they only last for a certain amount of time. I believe that's about six days before they sort of disappear off of the search engines page. Um, so those are just two different ways you could share offers on Google My Business. I like to say it's sort of like free advertising because it does show up right there in Google search, but it's not advertising. <laughs> and Google is only making Google posts more prominent in search results. So it's it's really become one of the first things that someone will see from your business. Um, and one more thing I would say here about lead generation, and it's actually actually a big thing, and I'm going to go into it in a little more detail in the next two slides, um, is to consider Facebook and Instagram advertising. And before we get into that, 
a, a pro tip here is to turn on instant replies on Facebook. Um, this goes back to what Steve was saying, where most people expect a response within 60 minutes. Is that what you said, Steve? 60 minutes of yeah. talking to a business? Yes. Um, so instant replies on Facebook are a really easy way to just let the customer know, like, hey, I've seen this message. I'm going to get back to you in X amount of time. Or for a faster response, you can call me here or email me here. It really sets expectations and lets them know that you will get back to them, just maybe not right this minute, because maybe you're out in the field, you're at a job site. Yeah, it's not reasonable to expect you to be on your phone or on Facebook all hours of the day, but it's any second a homeowner or a client can message you on Facebook and from their perspective, they expect that immediate answer while they're just just one of your clients or one of your prospects. So, mm -hmm. um, And if you do choose to run Facebook or Instagram ads, you're going to be getting more traffic to your Facebook page and to your website. So it's really important to turn these instant replies on then. So onto a little bit more about Facebook advertising, it really works and I could, I have done an entire webinar on Facebook advertising and I still didn't get all the way into it, um, but we can definitely link the recording of that for you guys in case you wanna go take a look at that. But Facebook advertising really allows you to hyper-target homeowners in your area. And actually, if you have a customer list, you can upload it and create a lookalike audience. So people, that look like your existing customers on Facebook to target even more. And there's so many targeting options on Facebook. You can also target your website visitors. And all of that is tied to your Facebook pixel, which is a piece of code that you put on your website. Like I said, I could go into a lot of depth here, but I do, before we go on to the next slide, want to go over very high level, what sort of strategy I have that has worked for our clients on Facebook advertising. Very high level. First type of ad you want to run is a sort of brand awareness ad to get Facebook page likes, to get website clicks. Um, and the goal of this is to really build your website visitor audience so you can go in and re-market to them using a lead generation ad. And the, I would say the brand awareness ad is something you want to be running with a very low, low budget, $5 a day consistently so you can keep building that website audience and keep targeting new website visitors with that lead generation ad. Because once they're a little bit more familiar with your business, they're more likely to actually fill out a form from a lead gen ad and book something with you. So very high level, that's how I would recommend you go about Facebook advertising. I will include a link to that recording so you can go ahead and take a look at it. All right, and then our, our next little subsection here, um, knowing how to post, or knowing what to post is one thing, knowing how to post is another, because different types of, whether you're sharing just a link or a video or a photo with a link, um, they all kind of are received differently and get different engagement on social media. So we're gonna, we pulled out these three right here, polls, uh, Facebook and Instagram stories and live video. These have been the kind of the three prominent um, ones that get the most engagement. And in case you're not familiar, I'm sure you've seen them before on, on Facebook and Twitter primarily, but you can ask a question to your audience and set the, the answers that you, you want them to answer with. Um, so it's just, it's a great way to get actual feedback and it's, it's simple and easy to answer. They just have to click something rather than typing a response or in this way you can make sure you're getting the answers that are actually helpful rather than someone writing an essay and not really actually answering or saying anything of substance. Before you move on, Nicole had a question. She asked if we have any offer ideas. And I see from your email address, Nicole, that you work at a roofing company. So some good ideas here. An offer idea that might stand out for you is to maybe offer a complimentary gutter cleaning with any sort of roofing purchase. Or a free in-home consultation is always a good offer 
everyone does the free in-home consultation, but really doing um, an offer that maybe offers something a little bit beyond that, such as a free gutter cleaning or something that might be a smaller price point for the business, but offering something that really is of value to that customer. Now we can go on, Steve. <laughs> Facebook and Instagram stories are definitely one of the, the type of ways to post that I, I engage with the most. Um, they're quick, digestible videos that don't that aren't permanent. So it kind of goes to the point where if you stumble over a few words on your Instagram story, it'll disappear. So you don't have to worry about the pressure of creating something perfect. And here's a great example of a contracting company that Surefire is connected with on Instagram and then posting a before and after um, shot there. And if you do end up recording like a really good Facebook, Instagram story that gets people interested, you can always save it as a highlight. So it always exists on your page for people to see. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> And this last one here is live video. It does get a lot of engagement, but it can be hard to know what sort of live video to do. Um, and something I would recommend here is if you're involved in any sort of community activities, like a 5K race or- Farmer's market farm, perhaps. Yeah, bake sale, something mm -hmm. like that. Um, that would be a good time to go on a live video when you and your employees are there just to talk for maybe like two or three minutes about the event and why you're there. Which kind of brings us very nicely into the next point. Um, the more you yourself engage, whether that's through your business <laughs> profiles or your own individual profiles and your employees' own individual profiles, the more others will engage with you too. So finding perhaps a Facebook group related to home maintenance or um, home improvement and then definitely next door conversations, LinkedIn groups. There are an endless number of Twitter chats that happen at all hours of the day. Um, contests and perhaps like we've, we mentioned with farmers markets, um, local charities, just the more you put yourself out there, the more that you're going to be um, top of mind and the more fun it will be too. So. Yeah. So you want to bring it all together, um, looking and considering how people are searching online today and how they're trying to gather information and just learn about your business. They go through multiple stages. So creating content kind of at each phase can help push them to the next one and that'll ultimately lead them to picking up the phone to call you or sending you an email. For example, the awareness you create on Facebook, like maybe with an awareness ad, sending them to your website. Once they're aware of your company, maybe they're actually considering your service. So they're going to go from there and they're going to look at your Google My Business reviews. They're going to look at your Facebook reviews um, and they're going to consider. And then from there, maybe you're retargeting to them on a Google ad or a Facebook ad and you're going to try to drive that conversion to a meeting. And from there, they're gonna say yes, they're gonna sign a contract and buy your services. And then it's on you to delight your customers, really provide the best experience possible so that they become an advocate for your company. And then in our <clears throat> next section here, we just wanna share some very quick, helpful tips that we've learned over time, kind of just living this and making some mistakes along yeah. the way and just, just going so trial and error. so first tip here creating videos does not have to be expensive it doesn't have to be difficult um iphone android smartphones create very high quality videos nowadays so all you need is your phone you need a steady hand and you need someone that is comfortable on camera mm -hmm. um if you find that your videos do end up being a little shaky, you can buy a tripod or a phone stand for $10 on Amazon. Um, and you can also create slideshow videos just from using different images. You don't actually have to record a video. You can use a free tool online, like Steve put on here, like Canva. You can go on and create a slideshow or actually a GIF using Canva. GIFs also 
are have good engagement, but not quite as much as video. And then tip two, you want to connect your social media into your overall digital presence. So that's adding links to your social media profiles in your perhaps your company email signature you send out or absolutely on your website in the header and footer sections. You want to be sure that you're using either the same logo or the same team photo, depending on which way you go as your profile picture. So there's brand consistency there and they I immediately identify that that is your business. And that's same goes for business name, phone number, your information you want to be correct and ha have the same information on all these profiles. Definitely. I have a tiny short story there. <laughs> um, not with a home services company, but I was looking online to buy something and they had one logo on Google My Business and they had links to their so to social profiles, but the logo and the image that they had on their Facebook page was so completely different than what they had on Google that it took me about 20 minutes of like looking around online to figure out if these were the same company. So it's just important to make sure everything's the same across these platforms. And then the classic tale, slow and steady will win the race. You don't wanna start implementing and from day one and posting everything you have within the first week or the first few days. You wanna kind of space out and be strategic with how frequent you're sharing updates that you always have something to share. If you don't have something to share, it's okay not to post. You don't wanna just post to post. Um, that's kind of one of an old school social media tactic. So now the key lies in really sharing and posting valuable content and photos. And you don't wanna go months and months without posting though, because <clears throat> then there'll be nobody paying attention to your social media profiles. And, yeah. Engaging you, you definitely you. need to have active profiles and you want to make sure that with your posts you're creating a value for everyone that's engaging or everyone that you want to engage with your posts. So have a regular schedule, but make sure it's something that is going to be useful. Yeah. So there are definitely a lot of tools out there that can help you really manage your social media strategy and post on a consistent schedule like Buffer, Hootsuite, um, but a lot of them are really focused just on like one specific area of your marketing. So a lot of them wouldn't integrate with Google My Business or there might be a platform or two missing here. And this is something that our CEO and the people that founded Surefire um, really noticed and they took to heart and they created this platform that's really a simple solution for all of your marketing. Social media is one part of it, but it helps you create schedule and post content to your website, to Google My Business, to all of your social profiles. And it helps you then track the engagement and performance. And it also takes care of the rest of your digital marketing efforts. So you can see website analytics, you can post business directory listings across I think it's over 70 listings on the web. You can send review requests and then respond to the reviews when they come in all from one place. So um, you're not going to all the different, you're not having to log into Google, you're not having to log into Facebook or Yelp to actually respond to these reviews. Much like um, I'm sure a lot of you use QuickBooks for your finances and accounting work um, and how that's kind of one software solution to manage all of that side of the business. This platform that we've been building and will actually be releasing a major update to this fall. Um, it's really cool. It looks beautiful, super easy to use. Mm -hmm. I'm so excited for it to be released. Yeah, it's just, it's one software to manage and improve all of your digital marketing, so. And it does include, um, paid advertising that you can do through the platform as well on Google, Bing, Facebook, all of that. So to finish off, I did wanna offer you guys the opportunity to actually get a demo of this platform and to schedule a call with Surefire to really get a free analysis of your digital presence. And like I said, a brief demo of this marketing platform. So we just launched a poll. Let us know if you're interested. We can talk tomorrow or we can talk next week or the week before. I know we have a holiday coming up with 4th of July. So just let us know. If you choose next week, we will be in touch shortly to get something that works with your schedule. And 
While we have this poll running, I did want to announce our Google Home Hub winner. And today's winner of the Google Home Hub is Danielle Hahn. Congratulations, Danielle. Please email marketing at surefirelocal.com with your full mailing address, and we will get that shipped right out to you. So with that, I want to say a huge thank you to you. Thank you to Steve and myself for doing this <laughs> webinar today. But mainly, thank you for taking the time out of your day. I really hope you learned something new. We do have a survey at the end, so if you can take a minute, just spill that out. Let us know how we did today. If there are any other topics that you'd specifically like to hear about in the future, we really love to check that out when we're scheduling future webinars. So let us know if there's anything specific. And with that, thank you. Have a great rest of your day. Thank you.